In this video, we're going to be looking at one math book for every subject. So I thought I would go through my collection and pick one book for every single math subject. Now, there are some subjects missing and there are some books missing. For example, I had a book on combinatorial topology, which I thought most people might not care about. But there are still plenty of really advanced books here on this pile. So we're gonna go through each book and we're just briefly gonna talk about some of the key points of that book. If you are interested in the book, what you can do is you can look in the description of this video and the best part is it's going to be organized by subject. So if you want to learn geometry, just look for geometry and there you have a resource. If you want to learn discrete mathematics, look for discrete mathematics, you'll have a resource. If you want to learn algebraic topology, you can look for algebraic topology, there you have a resource. Maybe you want to learn basic algebra, just look for you know intermediate algebra, you'll have a resource. So you should have pretty much every basic math subject. Most of these are undergrad and there's quite a few grad level subjects. I might have missed some key subjects, but I'm pretty sure I didn't forget a lot of the important ones. I didn't forget differential geometry. I didn't forget geometry. I didn't forget number theory. Most of them are here. Plus, at the end of this video, I wanna show you two really cool books at the very end. One is just on mathematics in general. It's kind of like a fun book. And another is a book that a famous Indian mathematician used to actually teach himself. The mathematician Ramanujan was self-taught and he learned from one of these books. And it's shocking because we have all of these math books here with all of these subjects, yet a person like Ramanujan was able to learn all this math from a little book with just results. It's really kind of creepy. Anyways, let's get started right away. And I'm just gonna go through in no particular order and show you these books. I tried to figure out like what's the best order to show you the subjects and it's kind of hard. So we're just gonna jump around and go from subject to subject. Let's do it right now. Before I show you these books, I want to mention three really important things. So first of all, all of these are textbooks. That's right, these are not workbooks. These are actual mathematics textbooks. So they contain tons of information and tons of mathematics. If you were to get one of these books and actually learn all the information in any one of these books, that would be an incredible feat because these books are jam packed with tons of interesting knowledge. Secondly, if you decide you're interested in one of these subjects and you check the description for the book, keep in mind that several of these books, in fact, all of them have used copies. I specifically picked books that have used copies just in case you want to save money. Thirdly, I'm going to actually try to go in order. So let's start from the very beginning uh, from basic mathematics and then we'll just kind of work our way up from there in some type of hopefully organized fashion. Let's start from the very beginning. This is Beginning and Intermediate Algebra, fifth edition by Elaine Martin Gay. So I picked this one because it has beginning and intermediate. So if you're really bad at mathematics, this has what many people consider to be called pre-algebra. Also, this book is available and there are used copies. Look how thick this book is. This is an actual textbook. It is not a workbook. That means it has tons of knowledge and tons of information. It talks about numbers, it talks about fractions. It's got plenty of examples where it shows you how to add fractions and simplify fractions. It has answers to all of the odd numbered problems in the back of the book. And it's just a nice, big, thick book, good quality pages. This book is heavy. You could, you could lift weights with this book. It's completely ridiculous. So if you are a person who has been out of school for a long time, maybe you didn't finish high school, maybe your math is just really weak, or maybe you're in an algebra class and you're really struggling, this is a super cheap, affordable book that you can get to supplement your studies or to use for self-study. The big thing is, if you decide to get this book, I definitely recommend getting a used copy if there's one available. But yeah, the subject here is going to be beginning and intermediate algebra just for beginners, awesome. A big step up from that book is a book on college algebra. This is College Algebra Essentials. This is actually the instructor's edition, but you don't have to get the instructor's edition. This is a great book. I've used this book to teach in college. I've taught uh, several college algebra courses in my lifetime using this book, and it's a really good book. This is the Essentials version, which means it's a little bit less expensive than the regular version, and this just happens to be uh, the version of the book that I use to teach in college. It's a fantastic book. It has great examples 
and it's a textbook. It's going to have everything you need for college algebra. Basically, that's you know quadratic equations, polynomials, graphs, systems of equations. The prereqs for this book, like if you just want to start here, well, if you've had some algebra in high school and you have basic algebra skills, start here and skip the other book. But if you feel like your algebra is really weak, start with the book I showed you before. This is a rare book in the sense that it's a book that is only on trigonometry. Most of the time in the U.S. when trig is taught, it's taught with what people call a pre-calculus book. Here's a look at some of the topics in this book. It has some prereqs. It talks about the trig functions. Analytic trigonometry. So lots of cool topics here. Oblique triangles and vectors. Complex numbers. It does have a section on exponential and logarithmic functions, which technically is not trigonometry. And it also does have a section on topics in analytic geometry, which again, technically is not trigonometry. But for the most part, it's a trig book, which again, is kind of unique. Swakowski is a really good author. He's written other books, including a calculus book, which is also excellent. And this is an older book. I'm not sure if it's still in print, but I do know that used copies are available and that's why I decided to include it in this video. Plus, it's a book that only covers trig. And in my experience, books that only cover trig, I feel like they do a better job of covering trig in general than books that cover both because the entire book is supposed to be focused on trigonometry, right? Here you see some identities that you have to prove. Those are really, really fun. Again, it's called Fundamentals of Trigonometry, and it's by ooh, the Swakowski series. How fancy. By Swakowski. This next book is called Precalculus Mathematics for Calculus. It was written by Stewart, Redlin, and Watts, and these are all very prominent authors. In particular, James Stewart was a very famous Canadian mathematician. He wrote a book titled Calculus, which I believe has been the most popular calculus book in the world. So great author, um, he had a, several best-selling books with calculus being his number one book. But he actually does have other books and this is one of them. This is his pre-calculus book. This is perfect for pre-calculus. I used to have this friend on the internet and he used to always say, what's pre-calculus? It's not really a math subject. Well, there's a book called pre-calculus, so we're gonna pretend it is a subject. Let me show you the contents. It starts with very, very basic mathematics. So a lot of the stuff that you see in those algebra books, you're gonna see in this pre-calc book. So it's kind of just like a repetition of what you saw before, but at a higher level. So if your math is really pretty good, you can skip algebra and jump into pre-calc. You could actually start here if you feel like your math is pretty good and you're almost ready for calculus. It has functions, like the graphs and the extrema. Then it talks about polynomials and rational functions. Again, these are topics that you would see in the college algebra book as well. Exponential and log functions, we saw that in the trig book. That's also in the college algebra book and it's in the pre-calc book. So there is overlap with these particular books. Then it talks about trigonometry. So this is a book that's actually used in the US at some colleges and universities to teach trigonometry. So this book can be used for both pre-calc and trig, but in the description, I'll just call it pre-calc, but keep in mind, you can use this one for both. You can use it for pre-calc and for trig. And it's a very modern book. This is a great choice for anyone who knows some algebra and just says, hey, I wanna get ready for calculus. Get this, right? Topics in analytic geometry, that's like conic sections and stuff. And then this one also has sequences and series. This is unique to this book. This is something you won't find in the other books that I've shown you. Counting and probability. And then it has a preview of calculus. This is also unique to this book. And it's also something that you won't find in a lot of pre-calc books. And it's one of the reasons I picked this one for this video. It has answers to all of the odd numbered problems. It's a great book. It's got a great modern layout. It's got good examples, good exercises, tons of exercises and answers to all of the odd numbered problems. So it's a solid text book. And I keep saying that because if you go on Amazon and you look for math book, you're gonna get a lot of math workbooks and they're really cheap. And these are a lot more expensive. But if you look for used copies, you just get so much more value because you get an actual textbook, right? Brand new, this book is probably a ton of money, but if you get it used, you can save a lot and get a lot of mathematics in one book. Next up we have calculus. And after this, it's gonna to start to get a little more interesting maybe because maybe you've seen a lot of these subjects before, but we still have a huge pile of books to go through. So calculus is something that people typically take in college in the US after they've had pre-calculus and trig. This is Thomas Calculus. And there was a man named George B. Thomas, and he wrote a book called Calculus. 
and it has been revised over the years by other people, and it's been revised so much that his name is now in the title of the book, Early Transcendentals, 13th edition. So I have various editions of Thomas Calculus. Here you see it's based on the original work by George B. Thomas Jr., Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that's MIT. So George B. Thomas wrote a fantastic book called Calculus, and this is the modern edition. I've made videos comparing the modern edition to the older edition. There's pros and cons. And for this video, I just thought I would show you the modern edition because if you are in college today and you're taking calculus today, this one might be more relevant. The sections might go uh, along better with what you're studying in class. This can help you for in the US for calculus one, two, and calculus three. It's got all the basic topics that you would see in a Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3 class. This one is very comparable to the famous book by Stewart, which is called Calculus. Also comparable to other big calculus books like the one by Larson or Swakowski or Briggs, etc. There's so many authors with so many great books. But I wanted to pick one for this video, and I picked this one because George B. Thomas uh, was a man who wrote a great book a long time ago, and his legend lives on in this book. This is a standard book, it's modern, it's got good examples, good explanations, a ton of exercises, and it has answers to all of the odd-numbered problems. So, excellent for self-study, excellent as a supplement, and it's a legendary book, the one that uh, you might have not seen, so I thought I would include it uh, in this video, Thomas Calculus Early Transcendentals. Let's go ahead and get proof writing out of the way first, because a lot of the topics that come after this, you might benefit from having some exposure to your proof writing, or exposure to higher level mathematics. There's all kinds of proof writing books. This is one I really like. It's called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach by Daniel Vellman. I like it because it's a good size. You can lay in bed and read it. It's uh, published by Cambridge University Press, and it's a great book. I, I like that Daniel gives multiple attempts many times to explain the same thing. So like if you don't understand a proof, he will make an effort and he'll try to explain it a different way. For example, when he's talking about vacuous truths, if my memory if my memory is correct, he gives you like three different explanations of why it works and why it should be true. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Perfect for anyone who wants to learn to write proofs. That's a fantastic book. There's other good books on proof writing that are also good. Uh, this just happens to be my favorite currently or one of my favorites. And it's just a great book. So who can learn from this book? anyone. So in most colleges in the U.S., like in order for you to take a class where you learn this, they require that you take like Calculus 2. And the reason they do that is because they want students to have like some type of mathematical maturity. That means basically they want to, want to make sure that you can actually learn math and like you're going to put effort in and you're like, you know, a good student and you can handle, you know, the symbols and the abstraction and all that stuff. So they put in some arbitrary prereq like Calc 2, which kind of makes sense. But from a self-study perspective, you can actually pick up this book with zero knowledge and start learning because it starts with the basic stuff, right? It starts about, you know, statements. What's a statement? What does it mean for a statement to be true? What does it mean for a statement to be false? Here you see the little logical symbols. So like that little, that symbol there means or, that one's and, that one's not. Sometimes people use like a little tilde symbol for the not, depends on the author, but yeah, details, right? So it's a great book. Very happy with this book. Highly recommended for anyone wanting to learn a different type of mathematics. This book will open the door to higher level math and it's super important. Now it's gonna get a little bit weird because now I'm not sure what to go over next. So we're just gonna jump around between various higher level topics. Well, this seems like a natural transition from the previous book because this one is called First Order Mathematical Logic. It's by Angela Margaris. This is a Dover book, which means it's probably really cheap. Even new, it's probably cheap. So Dover is a company that reprints old math books that are out of print and they make them in paperback and these books are really hardcore sometimes it'll say something about the quality of the book on the back i'm not seeing it here it'll say something about how dover is a permanent book and it's bound tightly and um, it's well made and they are they are so this is an entire book on logic okay so the book i just showed you by velman also covers logic but it really places a big emphasis on formal proofs, which is good. I think formal proofs are more important because most of the mathematics you do is, you know, formal paragraph style proofs. Whereas this book just really obsesses over the logic and just focuses on the logic. So if you want to really study mathematical logic, you can go further 
and, and you can get a book like this. However, if you are new to proof writing, I definitely recommend the Velman book first and then this one, or just jump into both at the same time because they should complement each other very, very well. Member theory is a subject that is studied pretty much exclusively by math majors. So if you're a math major, you might study number theory. I actually studied mathematics and I never studied number theory in an actual classroom. I just learned some number theory in other classes. This one's also a Dover book, so it's very well made and very affordable. And that's the reason I pick this one over some of the other number theory books I have, which might be a little bit more expensive or harder to find. Starts from the very beginning. Uh, the prereq for this book is basically, you know, you wanna have some mathematical maturity. So what does that mean? That basically means that you can pick up a math book and learn. But at what level? Well, I would say you know how to write proofs. If you know how to write proofs, you can slowly work your way through this book. Very, very slowly. It's gonna take a lot of effort, but it's a cool subject. And again, it's something that not every math major sees in a class because usually it's an elective class. Like if you study math in the US, typically number theory is like an elective, it's not a requirement. That was the case for me. I never actually took a course on number theory. I just saw some of it in other fields like abstract algebra and linear algebra sometimes. So yeah, it's a cool book on number theory and it's very affordable if you're interested in learning more about it. Since I mentioned abstract algebra in the previous book, let's talk about this one. This one is the Galleon book, Contemporary Abstract Algebra. This one is super widely available and that's why I picked this one. Uh, I had a friend uh, who's still my friend actually, I don't know why I said had, uh, he lives in New Zealand and this is the book that he used when he was an undergraduate uh, student. And I remember buying this book because he told me it was a good book and I loved it. So I have multiple editions of this book. Um, it's just a great book. It's got tons of examples and that's how I remember this book. It's a book of examples. So what is abstract algebra? It's basically the study of these things called algebraic structures, uh, groups, rings, and fields basically. There's also other algebraic structures like vector spaces and modules, but let's take a quick look at the contents here. So it starts with integers and equivalence relations, super important mathematics, groups, and it starts about talking uh, about the symmetry groups, which are very important, symmetries of a square, some cyclic group stuff, so basic group theory, moron groups, isomorphisms, all very standard stuff, so if you are uh, studying abstract algebra in college, this will go along very well with what you're doing in your classes. It's a really good supplement, and that's how I used it. Then it talks about rings, which is really cool. Rings are fun. And then it actually talks about fields. So it's got some field theory, starting with vector spaces. And then it goes onto some special topics. So some special topics in group theory, CeeLo theorems, and then uh, finite simple groups. And then it talks about some other more specialized things here. And then here it has like a short intro to Galois theory, which is cool. And it does have some answers uh, in the back of the book to some of the exercises, which uh, are super useful. It's better than no answers, but you see that it actually does have uh, some answers in the back, which makes it really useful for self study It's a great book. It's super affordable. Um, it's definitely worth it. And that's why I picked it for this video. I thought if I'm gonna pick one abstract algebra book, I have like 30 or more abstract algebra books. Let me pick the Galleon book because it's so widely available. Not something you see every day, a book devoted to probability and it's at the undergraduate level. So you could actually pick this up and start to learn probability. It takes some effort. Um, it's certainly uh, you know, more challenging than like you know, a college algebra book. But it's a Dover book, so it's inexpensive and it's worth trying. It's called Introduction to Probability by Frund. Let's take a, a brief look at the topics here. It starts with really basic stuff, right? This is stuff that you would also see in a discrete mathematics class. So if you take discrete mathematics, you'll see a lot of this stuff. So it could complement that class. Expectation, let's turn the page here. Events. Rules of probability, really basic stuff. And it's kind of cool because it's an entire book devoted to probability. Yeah, this is stuff you see in statistics too. If you take like a mathematical statistics class, I mean, I saw all of this stuff in my um, statistical theory classes. Chebyshev's theorem, I, I've taught this in basic statistics to college students, law of large numbers. So it's really basic stuff and it gives you answers to the odd number problems. So it's kind of nice. You have this, this book that's just, it's just so compact. 
and you have tons of answers. It's, it's just a nice book for learning probability, and that's why I wanted to include it. I have other probability books, but they're just way more advanced than this one. This is probably one of the easiest ones I have that's like widely available and simple, easy to read and affordable, and that's why I chose it uh, for this video, but yeah. Probability. Something else you often don't see is an entire book devoted to graph theory. I don't have many of these. I think I only have like two other ones. This is the one by Ronald Gould, and it's a pretty tough book. Um, people like this book, but I think it's pretty tough. Like, it's still a tough subject. This is something that if you were a computer science major, um, you would see this. You would take a course on discrete mathematics, perhaps, and you would see graph theory uh, in that course. And so this is an entire book, you can see the contents, devoted to the theory of graphs, which I studied some graph theory personally um, in a course called Combinatorics and Graph Theory, which is a combined course, and I also studied some graph theory in a course called Discrete Mathematics. But I never actually studied graph theory and used a book only on graph theory, so that's why I say it's not something you see every day. The books we used uh, for those courses I mentioned were discrete math books, not graph theory books. But this is an entire book on graph theory, which is kind of cool. So if you're interested in expanding your knowledge of graph theory or supplementing your current course, uh, might be a pretty good choice. Linear algebra is something that most math majors see, and a lot of engineering students who decide to do a math minor opt to take a course on linear algebra. I picked this one because it's very modern in its design. I have tons of linear algebra books, but the one by Larson and Edwards is very modern. Um, there's other good ones, but I just had to pick one because this video is uh, one math book for every subject, right? So I picked this one. That was the choice. I had to make a decision. Uh, it's very standard in its topics. It is not a proof-based linear algebra book, okay? So um, it's not going to require that you're like a proof-writing master. It's a computational-based book, so it's really good for beginners. I wanted to pick a beginner-level book for this video. So really basic stuff here. Um, nothing really intense, perfect for beginners, and it does have answers. Let me show you the answers. Oh, there's some writing there, someone's notes. Look at this, a treasure in the back of the book. So you see here, it does have tons of answers. Looks like most, most of the odd-numbered problems have answers, so that's very helpful for people who are doing self-study. And it's very modern in its layout. I like the layout, I like the different colors. Um, it's got tons of examples that are worked out in fairly good detail and plenty of exercises. And the exercises are modern in the sense that if you're taking a class, some of these exercises might appear in your test, you know, because there's only so many types of problems that people usually cover in classes. So great book for self-study, great as a supplement. And I don't think it's one I've talked about before. That's another reason I picked it. It's the one by Larson and Edwards. This one's a little bit out of order and it happens. I figured I would mess up and not go like entirely in order. This is a very beginner level book. You don't need to know how to write proofs or anything. You can just buy this book and start learning statistics. So I picked this one because it's widely available and it's probably not one that you're using in your class today. There's other books that are more popular. This one um, is still used, but I don't think it's as popular. Uh, this is the instructor's edition, but you can get any edition. It's Statistics by Weiss. And this is a modern book on statistics. It's going to focus on the concepts and it should serve as a good introduction to the subject for anyone wanting to learn statistics. Certainly there are other books that are more advanced, and I'll show you another more advanced mathematical statistics book later in this video, uh, but this one doesn't require any proof writing. It's meant for people who know very little math, and it has really good explanations, and it talks about you know, why things work. You know, why does a hypothesis test work? What does a confidence interval mean? Um, so yeah, it's very um, computational based. Uh, focuses on the why and why things work. It's a pretty good book. It just requires patience, effort, and a lot of reading, and perfect for getting started with very basic statistics. Next up, we have complex variables. So complex variables is a really cool subject, and many people say that it's one of the coolest math subjects that you can study as an undergraduate. This book is called Fundamentals of Complex Analysis with Applications to Engineering and Science, and it was written by Saf and Snyder. Now I have other complex variables books that are a little bit more affordable than this one and are also really good, but I do think this one is slightly better. Even though it's more expensive, it's slightly better, so I thought I would pick this one. I thought, I really like this book. Let me just put this one in the video because I really, really like this book. So I put it in the video, and here it is. It's a great book, excellent book. I highly recommend this book. I've done a ton of the exercises from this book. Oh, look, I've done all of these. Look, 
Wow, that was random. So all of these, this is my handwriting. I've done all of these problems. So yeah, it's, it's a great book. So to, to study this stuff, you need to know calculus. So if you take um, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, then you can jump into this book. Um, there is some proof writing involved in complex variables. So you know, having some exposure to the structure of proofs, we talked about proof writing earlier in this video, would be helpful. But you can do a lot of the computational stuff without proofs. Like look at all these integrals and stuff and limits. So it's really calculus based. It's basically a calculus with complex numbers. A lot of it is computational. So because of that, uh, this is a very accessible subject to most uh, engineering students. And it's typically a course uh, taken by engineers who decide to get a math minor. So beautiful subject. There's all kinds of really cool results and complex variables. It's a fun class. It's a fun class and I think it's an awesome subject. So yeah, there it is. Great choice for complex variables. Here we have numerical analysis, a first course in numerical analysis by Anthony Ralston and Philip Rabinowitz. And this is a good choice for numerical analysis. I don't have that many books on numerical analysis. I have a couple other ones, but I feel like they're much harder than this one. So I thought this one would be a good choice. Also, this one's affordable and available because it's a Dover book. Numerical analysis is a course that many people don't actually take in college. I never took a course on numerical analysis. I know some of this stuff um, because I've seen it in other courses, but it's not something that most people take. It's typically uh, an elective. So if you are taking numerical analysis, this is a highly rated book and it's affordable and it's big and it's thick and it's got tons of techniques in it. Look at that, look how thick that is. It's awesome. Geometry is a subject that I often overlook in my videos and I wanted to include a geometry book that is way, way above high school level. It's Geometry, a Comprehensive Course by Dan Pado. So this is meant uh, for uh, advanced students, uh, advanced undergraduates or first year graduate students. I think it even says it here in the preface. This book is based on a course given for the past few, past few years at the University of Minnesota to junior and senior students to first year graduate students and to a year academic institute of college teachers of geometry. Wow. So it's, it's meant to be comprehensive um, and it's a good source for geometry. So if you want a solid book on geometry that has a lot of like geometry in it, not just like really basic stuff, uh, this is one that you could get. I had a really hard time deciding what book to use for the video for this particular topic. This book is called Elementary Analysis, The Theory of Calculus. And the topic here is basically undergraduate real analysis or advanced calculus. I picked this one because I think that the proofs in this book are very well done. The layout is very well done and the author shows a lot of detail. Certainly this is a much gentler book than say the one by Rudin, Principles of Mathematical Analysis. Now this book is not perfect, right? It doesn't have as many topics as a lot of the other advanced calculus books, but I wanted to include something for beginners so that if you're watching this video and you want to learn analysis, this could be a place where you could start, right? This is a good starting point in my opinion. Uh, you would need to know uh, some proof writing, but uh, having that proof writing uh, and this book uh, together, you could learn analysis on your own. Let me briefly show you some of the topics. So you see it doesn't cover uh, that much, right? So it starts with just numbers, sequences, continuity, sequences and series of functions, differentiation and integration, and that's it, right? So it's just very short, it's a very short book, but it's to the point, it's clear, and the author does a wonderful job in the explanations. I just think it's a good book. I, I really like this one. Again, it's called Elementary Analysis, The Theory of Calculus by Kenneth Ross. Topology is a really fun subject and many people have a hard time with it. This is an interesting book because this one has answers to every single problem. That's right, it has solutions to every single proof in the back of the book, which is super, super rare. You might say, oh, that means it's an easy book. I can buy this book and I can learn topology. Uh, yes and no, um, you still have to like struggle and learn, it's still really hard. But the fact that you have answers or hints to every single problem in the back of the book is huge. And it was tough choosing this one because there's other good books like the one by Monkreis, which is famous and super thick and legendary, but it doesn't have answers, right? This one has answers and it's more affordable because it's a Dover book and it's widely available. So it's affordable, it has answers. I love this book, I definitely recommend it. To study topology, the prereqs are gonna to be proof writing and not just like basic proof writing. 
you know, your maturity has to be a little bit higher. So like you typically to do really well in topology, you're going to want to take it like your senior year of being a math major. So you, you've had some advanced calculus, you've had some abstract algebra, you've had some, some exposure to proof writing, some serious exposure, not just like baby proofs. You've gone through some deeper mathematics and you know how to construct proofs. You have more experience. And the more experience you have, the easier it is going to be to attack a subject like topology. Uh, this book is a topology book. It's, it's tough, it takes effort, but it's a fantastic book and I can't recommend it more. It's the one by Gainlin and Green. This is like a hidden treasure in my opinion in the world of topology. Since we just talked about topology, let me try to go in order. Next up is Algebraic Topology. This is one by Mayer. This is very advanced and it's a decent choice for learning algebraic topology. Basically, um, you want to know a lot of mathematics and a lot of topology uh, before tackling something like this. This is extremely difficult. It's going to take an incredible amount of time and it's certainly not undergraduate level. This is graduate level mathematics uh, and it takes a considerable amount of time and effort um, to uh, understand a book like this. But this one is a good choice for algebraic topology. There's other books out there and I have other ones, but I think this one is a pretty good choice. This is a little bit out of order because this could have been discussed after a calculus. This is differential equations. So this book covers both regular and some partial differential equations, but the topic here will be differential equations. This is the one uh, by Nagel, Saf, and Snyder. This is a very standard book. It covers all of the topics uh, that you would see in a differential equations course in college. This is actually the book that I used when I studied differential equations many, many years ago. So I've read big portions of this book. I've done a lot of the exercises. I think it's a pretty good book. It's not the easiest one, uh, but it's not the hardest one. And it does have really good examples and good exercises. Plus, it gives you a little intro at the end to partial differential equations, and you do get answers to the odd numbered problems. So yeah, here you can see the answers. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's a nice book, and I'll leave a link in the description under the topic differential equations, solid book on DEs. Next up is partial differential equations. This is the one by Greenspan. This is a really good choice for learning partial differential equations. Um, it's an entire book on partial differential equations. I picked this one because it's not super expensive uh, and it's available, right? It's available and it's well-written. It's a nice book on PDEs. In order to study this, you have to know uh, differential equations. So basically after you study differential equations, um, you can use a book like this. I like my copy. Look at all the effort that was put in to this book. I have to smell it. I just have to smell it. Ah, oh, it smells so good. Yeah, my copy is amazing. I love all of this writing. Look at that. Ah, oh, amazing. Fantastic book. I mentioned I would talk about mathematical statistics. So here it is. This is a book on mathematical statistics. So this is a little more advanced or rather a lot more advanced than the book we saw earlier by Weiss. So this has really beautiful stuff. There are other books on mathematical statistics. I really like this one. Uh, it's called uh, John E. Froon's Mathematical Statistics with Applications. Uh, I think it's a great book. There's other really good books on mathematical statistics. I just decided to choose this one uh, because it's available and it's a solid book and the entire book is on mathematical statistics. So this does use some calculus. So that's something that you would want uh, to know before jumping into uh, some of the sections. As you can see here, there's some integrals here and stuff. So it's gonna be calc three type stuff there because you have uh, an iterated integral there. But you can learn a lot of it without calculus. In fact, it starts from the very beginning such that in a way that you could learn uh, with just basic math, like just basic reading, you could, anyone can read this and understand this. Like you don't need any algebra or any hardcore math skills for this. Um, it's pretty easy. It, it just, it starts to get harder the further you go in the book, that's all. But it's a great book for mathematical statistics. Don't let um, the difficulty level of the later sections put you off. It's a really solid choice if you want to have a book on the subject. The topics are gonna to start to get a little more specific now because we're reaching the end of the pile here. So this is functional analysis. This is the one by Kreisig, and I definitely think this is the easiest book in the entire world on functional analysis. I have many other books on functional analysis and they are so much harder than this one. So I actually use this one for a course. Uh, this is the international edition, but you can get any edition and it's an awesome book. It's fantastic. In order to learn functional analysis uh, using this book, 
you're going to want to have some serious proofwriting skills. And if you have that, uh, then you're good. In other words, you want to have some advanced calculus behind your back, some abstract algebra, maybe even a topology class or two, or maybe just one, so that you have some exposure to proof writing. Um, if you do have that, then this is not hard. If you don't have that, then this is going to be super, super hard. But this is like the easiest book out there for functional, and that's why I picked this one. Earlier we saw Abstract Algebra, and I showed you the book by Galleon because it's like super widely available. And recall that book did have an intro to Galois theory. So I wanted to pick a book entirely uh, devoted to Galois theory. It's this one here by DJH Garling. It's an entire book on Galois theory, which is kind of cool, kind of random and strange. And I did leave some advanced topics out of this, or maybe, maybe several out of this video, but this is one I wanted to include because I feel like it follows um, you know, the progression fairly easily. Like you, you can learn abstract algebra, learn about fields in that book, and then jump into this one. So yeah, nice little book. And it's small, right? It's a small little book on Galois theory by Garling. Totally random, but a book on Fourier series. This is the one by Georgie B. Tolstov. This is a Dover book, which means it's affordable. And that's one of the reasons I included it. I thought, well, it's a book that many, maybe a lot of people won't be interested in, but the fact that it's a Dover book and it's on Fourier series, which you might see in college, depending on your major. So might be worth getting and some people might be interested in this book. So it does have answers in the back of the book. As you can see here, it has answers to the problems, which is pretty cool, which make it awesome for checking your work, right? Look at that. So you've got three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it has a lot of the answers, right? A lot of the answers. It's got good exercises. It has good examples. So Fourier series is something that you want to learn or you will be learning. Um, there's an entire book on it and it's a Dover book and it's affordable. Maybe not the cheapest book out there, but it's kind of a classic. Plus I wanted to show my copy because it has the dust jacket. This is Differential Geometry by Auslander and it's just a very old book. This treatment of classical differential geometry of surfaces combines both the modern and classical approaches to give the student a better insight into the subject. Beautiful, I love the dust jackets. Really nice. Dedicated to my parents. 1967, this copy is in really good condition. Here's a look at some of the topics. Starts with some algebraic preliminaries and then some differentiable structures. And there's some more topics here. So uh, it's an advanced subject. You're gonna need to know some serious math uh, before jumping into this. The inner product space stuff should be reviewed to you if you're reading this book. In other words, you, you, know, you wanna have some linear algebra and some calculus and hopefully some analysis uh, before jumping into a subject like this one. This is a subject that, by the way, like you can get a math degree and, and you won't take a course on differential geometry. It's not always taught and it's usually an elective course at most schools. This is a book that covers graduate level analysis and it's a Dover book and that's kind of unique. Uh, it's called Foundations of Modern Analysis by Friedman and that's why I picked it because it's a Dover book. There's other great classic uh, books on you know measure theory and stuff, but they're kind of expensive and it's even used they're expensive This one is not expensive. So I thought it would be a good uh, choice for this video for people who are interested in learning uh, more advanced mathematics So measure theory integration Metric spaces elements of functional analysis and Bonnock spaces. This is stuff you would see uh, as a first-year graduate student so your first semester uh, you would study stuff like this. And this is a really nice book. It's a, it's a great book. Um, it's a hidden gem, I think. If you've never heard of it, now you have. If you're a graduate student, get it. Uh, if you're not and you care about learning analysis at the graduate level, get it, right? It's really affordable for uh, an analysis book. This is a wonderful book I, I actually used for a course in graduate school uh, called Stochastic Processes. So I took a course called Stochastic Processes and this is the book I used. This is the one by Sheldon Ross. Now, I actually didn't own the physical book uh, when I took the course. Um, I think I checked that out of the library or something because uh, I didn't have the money to buy the book. But uh, after graduating several years later, <laughs> I finally had the money and I bought the book. So here it is. Uh, I've read parts of this book. It's pretty good. Um, some parts are harder to read than others. It's a very elegant book. Um, there's some really cool uh, arguments and uh, things in this book, random walks and martingales. So if you have to study stochastic processes, 
this is this is an excellent choice. I was very happy with the book and very happy with the class. You know, I I got an A, and here you do have some answers to some of the problems in the back of the book, and they're pretty detailed as you can see. I mean, he goes through in great depth for the answers that he does give. So, classic book uh, by uh, an authority, right? Sheldon Ross, Stochastic Processes. Very, very elegant looking textbook. An entire book on the theory of rings. I know uh, this is kind of strange, but I thought I would include this one. It's called The Theory of Rings by McCoy. I actually have other books on ring theory, but uh, they're just, I don't know. I feel like this one's a little bit uh, easier than some of the other ones I have. Um, and also just the layout is nicer. It's smaller, it's not as intimidating. Let's look at some of the topics here. Examples and fundamental properties of rings, ideals and homomorphisms, subdirect sum of rings. It's just a little bit easier, uh, a little bit more accessible than some of the other ones I have. Prime ideals and prime radical, endomorphisms and linear transformations, and then the Jacobson radical and some additional topics. Cool, cool stuff. I like ring theory. I studied a lot of ring theory. Yeah, it starts off with just the definitions. This is really basic, you know, it's like a gentle introduction. It makes you feel smart because, you know, if you have some proof writing background or some abstract algebra background, you, you can pick this up and be like, yeah, I understand ring theory. You know, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. It's a nice, it's a nice introduction um, and it's affordable. Um, it should be affordable. I looked it up and it didn't seem too pricey. I don't know how many copies were available. The topic for this one, by the way, will be obviously ring theory. This one is really specific and you've probably never seen a book on this topic before in your life, but if you have, uh, that's cool. If not, here it is. Methods of the theory of functions of several complex variables by Vladimirov. Uh, there's a few copies of this, I think, available on the internet. Uh, it's probably out of print. And it's just interesting because it's a book on several complex variables. That's not something that um, you see very often. And I have other really weird advanced math books and I, and I didn't really include them in this video, but I included this one just because I thought, I don't know, it just sounds cool. Thought I would show you a book on several complex variables. Most colleges and universities, or many colleges and universities, don't even teach this. It's not even taught um, because the, I guess they don't have a faculty member that can teach the class, you know, because it's so, uh, you know, specialized, right? So that's kind of cool. But yeah, yeah, just really, really high level mathematics here. This is what you're looking at. Uh, so I thought I would include it because, you know, uh, it's a math book for every subject, although I am missing some, but yeah, kind of an interesting choice for a book. So I promised to show you two really cool books at the end of this video. So first we have this one here by Serge Lang. This one is called Basic Mathematics. And I chose this one because I think this is a fun book. This is the kind of book that might make you love math again. So Serge Lang uh, was a famous mathematician. Uh, he passed away and this is one of his books. He wrote tons of books. So you see here it has all kinds of strange topics, uh, strange in the sense that they don't really coincide with any class that's taught today. So like numbers, linear equations, real numbers, quadratic equations, and then like, it's gonna skip to other stuff. Geometry, coordinate geometry, some stuff with points and lines, trig. It's got a section on sine and cosine. I mean, who does that, right? Serge Lang does. <laughs> so it's just very different from other books. Uh, it's just so different, right? And then functions, mappings. It talks about the formalism of mappings, like the actual function notation, which you don't see in basic math books, but Lang does it. Right? Complex numbers, induction, determinants, a little bit of linear algebra here, and an index. Now notice it doesn't say anything about answers, but look, it does have answers. It has answers to selected exercises in the back of the book. So I don't know why it doesn't say that it has answers, but it does have answers to some of the exercises. It's got great examples. It reads really well. Uh, biggest downside of this book is the price. It's not cheap. Even used, it's expensive. Um, so it took me a long time to decide to buy this book, but I love Serge Lang books. So I eventually bought it and I love the cover. It's just so cool. It's just like yellow. So this is a reprint of the book that Ramanujan used to teach himself mathematics. So Ramanujan was uh, this mathematician. He passed away a long time ago. He was from India and he was very poor and he communicated with Hardy and he went to England and he worked with Hardy and you know he did a lot of great mathematics, discovered a lot of really interesting things. And it's just amazing that he used this book um, to teach himself. I'm pretty sure his friend, the story is that his friend uh, lent him a library copy of this book or something like that. Um, well, that's the contents. It's really old school, right? And he was able to use this book um, to, to teach himself mathematics. So let me just, let's just jump to the book. 
So you see, it's just like a series of results, right? It's just like, this is how he learned. I mean, just using this, like 155, it's just like a, like an expansion, <laughs> right? I mean, you just, it's just so hardcore. You know, we, we just went over all of these books for all these different subjects. And here you have a book that just covers a ton of mathematics. And a man known as Ramanujan, a poor man, was able to use this book to learn mathematics. It just shows that with effort, uh, great things can be accomplished. Um, I mean, he is, he is basically the definition of a genius to use a book like this to learn. This book is cool though, because it does have like, everything is compartmentalized, right? It's just like to the point. So it's kind of nice, you know, you can sit down with a cup of coffee and just go through, like here's Ferrari's solution. Let me go back and show you what this is talking about. This is the theory of equations. By quadratic equations, there's Descartes solution, gives you the idea behind the process. And then here's Ferrari's solution, and here's Euler's solution. So just really interesting things that you're not going to see uh, in a lot of other books uh, you find in this book. So yeah, interesting book. Uh, and I'll just uh, leave a, a link in the description to this one. I'll just put like Ramanujan, uh, Ramanujan book or something in the description. I'll make it known in case you're interested in this one. This is a reprint. Um, yeah, pretty cool. There you have it. One math book for every subject or almost every subject. I certainly covered uh, a lot of math subjects. All these books, again, are available now, and there should be used copies to all of these books if you decide you are interested in one of these subjects. When you look in the description, just look for the subject. It just makes it easier for me. I can just say differential equations, and then I can link this book instead of having to like write down the whole title because there's a lot of books, right? Also, um, if you want to learn mathematics and uh, you want to like learn through a course instead of books, I do have courses. Check out my website mathsorcerer.com. Um, my courses are on the Udemy website, but if you get my courses, please use the links on my website um, because I lowered the price to the lowest possible price. So you should get a good price. Um, and also, um, if you go through my links, it just helps me more. So yeah, check these books out uh, if you're interested in them. I think they're all pretty good, especially if you can get used copies. You know, you can build your collection of math books. I just, again, just thought I would make this video to show you one math book for every subject. I hope it's been helpful. Oh, and if you're not a subscriber and you feel like subscribing, hit subscribe. Until next time, good luck, take care, keep doing mathematics.